for 2021, there's an exciting new development in the racing world, and it's called the Track Champions League. It's set to be the most high-tech, most viewer interactive, and most fiercely contested track racing the world has seen. And best of all, there's heaps of cool tech involved with this race format to give you, the viewer, all the live data and metrics direct to your smartphone as you sit there and watch the race live right in front of your very eyes. I'm here at the London Velodrome, which is going to host rounds four and five of the Track Champions League, where some of the world's best riders are going to go head to head in search of victory. Now, track cycling has come a very long way since its inception in the 1890s, and with so much tech packed into the racing, I thought it was only right to find out more about it from founding riders Sir Chris Hoy and Ed Clancy OBE. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us. It's going to be really helpful. So for everybody at home that isn't maybe familiar with the Track Champions League, can you give us a bit of an insight into what the format is and what the racing is all about? After you, Ed. Right then. <laughs> so I believe there's six rounds um, across Europe. And there's for male endurance, female endurance, male sprint, female sprint, there's going to be two races a night. So for male endurance, for example, we've got a scratch race and an elimination race. And uh, there's obviously prizes to be given out for each individual race, but it's all about the championship and a big wonderful trophy at the end of it, if you can fit it in your house. <laughs> um, this is um, certainly the best go of it that I've seen, and anyone trying to bring it to the fans, you know. It is a gladiatorial atmosphere, the racing's incredible, and I think this is the best go that I've seen to try and you know, make it interactive with the fans. We're going to be looking at the power data from our pedals and top speeds, and there's going to be out for people's phones and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it's about trying to make track racing exciting, interactive. But it's hugely underrated, I think, track cycling as a, as a sport, and it has so much potential, and it's such an exciting, inherently exciting thing to watch, the high speeds and the close contact, the venue itself, you know, being inside a velodrome, the atmosphere, everything about it. And it, there are lots of events in track cycling, so by condensing it down and keeping it really nice and simple, only a two-hour format, you know, a two-hour um, session, and really condensing all the best bits into, into one programme. And to get the best riders together too, you go to a World Cup, you don't get all the best riders at the same time. The only time you get World Championships, Olympic Games, the only two races that you get all the best riders in the world. So this, you're gonna have six races on consecutive weekends for the best guys in the world racing it out every single position counts from first down to last because it counts for points for the overall so the guy they're all going to be on top form really excited and i think from a, as a fan's perspective it's it's really exciting too that's going to make for some really exciting racing and i'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of that but as well as the cool racing there's the sort of technical element as well because i hear there's going to be access for everyone at home and in the stands to see the live power and heart rate data from the riders. So how do you see that changing the dynamic of the race, for example? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the data capturing, if you like, it's, it's nothing new to me and Chris. You know, British Cycling have been doing it for a long, long time. And uh, I think it's a big part of the reason, you know, we had a bit of an head start on the world, if you like. So it's not just capturing that data, it's kind of looking back and reflecting on it and using that to kind of like shape your future races and even your training program. And um, so I guess I'm talking from a rider's point of view. It's going to be interesting for the riders to check out what your teammates are doing and look at, you know, how much power is he making or she making well, the You can look at your rivals, can't you? You can, yeah, you can get yeah. the data retrospectively. You can look at your rivals, see what they've done. You can work out how they're approaching their flying lap or their, their sprint or their Kieran or their scratch race, average power, peak power, all that. But even as a fan, though, I think, you know, a lot of cyclists out there now have power cranks or some power measurement device on their bike. So they know what 200 watts feels like. So when they see Jeffrey Hoogland or Love racing or whoever kicking out 2,500 watts, that's going to blow their mind, and they can see it, and they can then start to appreciate the kind of effort that's going into to making these bikes travel at nearly 80 k's an hour. Right, that's been really helpful. So thanks very much, and uh, see you in a bit. So I've made it back to GCN Mega Base after a great day at the Velodrome, chatting to Sir Chris Hoy and Ed Clancy OBE. But before I left. I was fortunate enough to have a go on the bikes riding around the velodrome and complete a flying lap to see just how fast I could go on one of the velodrome's higher bikes. But the crucial part here is that it enabled me to capture the same data that's going to be captured and recorded 
from the riders when they're racing at the Track Champions League so that I can give you, the viewers, a little snapshot to see what it would be like during the actual event. The smartphone app will enable you to tap into all the data and information from all the riders as they're racing in real time and you can pick and choose which ones you want to look at. And the really cool bit is you can even give your favourite riders a virtual cheer. I mean, how cool is that? Surely it's a world's first. Now, if you're not familiar with the flying lap, you get two laps to build your speed up and get prepared for your one sprint effort and where you ride full gas and that's where your effort is timed. The official race timing is done via the usual transponders and methods, just as at all track events. But the super techie part is that as the riders are racing around the velodrome, all the data from each person, such as their heart rate, power, speed, cadence, and position within the race, is recorded in real time. There's so much data being gathered from so many riders all at the same time that Amazon Web Services have been drafted in as the event's data partner. AWS take all of that data, process it into a usable format, and then present it in real time back to us, the viewers, so we can pick and choose what rider stats we want to see. How amazing is that? And on the day I did my efforts, we recorded all of the data using a Wahoo head unit and the heart rate data we recorded using a Wahoo ticker fit heart rate monitor strap, which goes on your arm and uses an optical sensor. And for the power, we used Asioma power meter pedals and then we can assess and record all of that data just the same as we'll be able to during the event itself. I've got two examples here so you can know what to expect to see within the smartphone app. I've got the data from my flying lap and also the data from Ed Clancy's lap. So let me run through mine first. So I did a flying lap with a time of 15.454 seconds. Fairly happy with my own efforts if I say so myself. And then from all the data we recorded, I've got an average speed of 58 kilometers an hour, maximum speed of 61, average cadence 134. How fast is that? Especially on the small gear on the velodrome hire bikes. And then we've got heart rate here, an average of 167 beats a minute and a maximum of 171, which is only a couple of beats away from absolute maximum heart rate possible anyway. And from the power meter data that we've recorded, We've got an average of 763 watts and a maximum power of 1,007 watts, which is a little bit down on my max power, I must say, but of course, it's not going to be anywhere near as high as Ed's efforts. Ah, breaking news though, the staff at the Velodrome did say to me that I broke the current lap record on a higher bike, although I've got to say this is very much unofficial, and they tell me that I broke Bradley Wiggins' record that was set when the Velodrome opened on one of the hire bikes. I've got to say, I'm quite happy with that. So to compare my efforts to Ed Clancy's efforts, I can see here Ed has done a lap time of 13.794 seconds, so a fair bit faster than me, with an average speed of 65 kilometers an hour, maximum speed 71 kilometers an hour. Average cadence is 130 RPM, so a little bit down on mine, but the reason that's down is because he's got a much bigger gear enabling him to go a lot faster. Also, the fact he's significantly better than me. Um, Ed had an average heart rate of 172 beats a minute and a maximum heart rate of 174. So fairly comparable. I suppose that means we're trying a similar effort compared to each other. And then if we look at some of the power data from this effort, this is really cool. We've got an average power for Ed Clancy's lap of 858 watts with a maximum power of 1,102, 1,112 watts, sorry, which Ed did tell me on the day was a little bit down to, compared to what he was expecting, although he says he hasn't really been training much. And I can also see the little button here, which during the event would allow me to be able to cheer my favorite riders and give them a real world thumbs up in the virtual world. So there you have it, a quick run through of some of the different tech that's going to be used at the Track Champions League. I hope you found that really interesting. If you have, let us know in the comments section down below and share this video far and wide for everyone to see. See you later.